Hello, and welcome back to Tech Ambrosia. I've been struggling with how to frame this episode because, well, this motherboard is kind of a piece of shit. Let's call it a cautionary tale. This is a board that shouldn't exist, but it does exist, and you shouldn't fall victim to the siren song of its existence. Let's break it down. All set? <laughs> Bottoms up. I had so much script written about this board originally. I really wanted to give it a fair shake, but in the end, it's inexcusable. It's a novelty at best. I did a week's worth of benchmarking on this stupid thing just to find out it's about a half to two-thirds the speed of my OEM 440BX board in actual games. And that's after slogging through the mess that was late 90s via drivers. I ended up needing a driver package from 2005 to get this board to run its AGP slot at full speed. And somehow, it's still slow. It seems on the surface like it'd be a great board for a retro collector. Slot 1 and Socket 370 on the same board. You can run the bulk of your P6 CPU collection on one motherboard. No slockets necessary. Heck, it advertises being able to run both 133 and 150MHz frontside buses, which is awesome. However, there are no voltage controls on the board, so good luck overclocking your CPUs. And it's still slower at 133 than a 440BX is at 100 megahertz. How? This was a problem back when this was a new board. This board uses the VIA Apollo Pro 133 chipset. From what I can dig up from reviews from other VIA boards at the time, about half of the boards manufactured shipped with configuration errors that dramatically limited their performance versus their peers. But even when it's firing on all cylinders, Apollo Pro isn't particularly fast. It even struggles against Intel's infamous i800 series of chipsets. Even the notorious i820 can be faster than a properly set up Apollo Pro in some tests. And this board is anything but properly set up. So let's hit some benchmarks, and then I want to compare it to my 440BX. Okay, well, at, at least we're seeing the kind of CPU and bus speed scaling we'd expect to see, but I looked at those numbers for the P3750 and became highly suspicious. So I dug out my Gateway OEM motherboard, which is a pretty standard Intel Warm Springs reference design, but uses the venerable 440BX chipset, and threw that Pentium 3750 onto the slot. Well, the results speak for themselves. A 47% uplift in DOS Quake, and a 37% uplift in hardware-accelerated Quake 3. It looks like the specter of poor Apollo Pro performance haunts this board. The review roundup from Anand Tech suggests that some direct tweaking of the PCI configuration registers using WPCR edit can restore performance on some boards, but it requires an enormous amount of trial and error and crashing and rebooting your system to find the settings needed, since none of this is documented anywhere. Overall, I don't recommend this board. Stay away. If you really need a VIA Apollo Pro chipset board, try searching for the higher performers in the Anand Tech article. And if you need a way to run both your slotted and socketed CPUs on one board, well, it looks like sockets really were the best method there. That's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great night.